Amen. Amen. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Let me see. Amen. I'm warning you, correction and destruction must come before the blessing. Yeah. Now, this scripture in Genesis, somebody say in the beginning. 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 This scripture in Genesis is a very familiar passage. It deals with Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. And if you're familiar with Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah, let me break it down to you. It was a place known for uh, its devious acts mm -hmm. that were wrongfully always committed against us. It was, it was a place of greed. It was a place mm -hmm. of homosexuality, a place of fornication. It, it was just a, a place that was living out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. And if we go back to chapter 18 in Genesis, we see Abraham and the three visitors that come to visit him. And they come to visit him and they tell him that even in their old age, they want to have a son. Mm -hmm. They want to have a son, but they don't believe him because they're old and because they are at the age where childbearing seems impossible. Mm -hmm. But God is a God that can that loves to do the impossible. Yes, he, does. he loves to work miracles. He got, miracles are not something that makes sense. Miracles are things that you cannot understand or cannot never logically figure out. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I serve a God that can do things that people don't understand because he, people would know that that's the kind of God that I serve. Amen. Amen. So, so we so we get in, in Genesis chapter 18 and we see the visitors come. We see the visitors come and they come to visit Abraham. Abraham welcomes them with open arms and Abraham brings them in and, and gives them the bread, gets the service to make the bread and gives the service to seat them and all that and the whole nine yard sticks and, and Sarah is preparing the bread and she's listening to the prophets. Prophesy to her husband. Prophesy to the head mm -hmm. that you're going to get a blessing. You're going to get your child that you've been asking for, that you've been longing for. Mm -hmm. And see, one thing I like about it, God always sends a prophet mm -hmm. to confirm what he's already told you. Yeah. And see, sometimes God will give you a prophecy. God will give you a word. But the, all the, prophet, the prophet never tells you nothing new. The prophet tells you all what God already told you. Mm -hmm. And so they come, they come and they tell him that he's having a child. And, you know, they had to, they, 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 they're listening to him, you know, and it seems impossible. But as they're going throughout the conversation, they get ready to leave. And as they get ready to leave, Abraham looks down at the town called Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said he remembers his nephew Lot is in the, is, is in the city. And the Lord tells Abraham, you see this place down there? He said, I'm about to destroy it. And he remembers his nephew Lot. He says, well... God, what if it's 50 people that's righteous? Mm -hmm. wow. Will you not spare the town because of 50 people that's been living righteous? Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. God said to Abraham, he said, if I find 50, mm. I won't spare. I won't spare. Mm. Then Abraham goes, okay, God, what if it's 45? Mm. Now, see, he already knows what's going on inside of Gomorrah, but he just said it because he knows his nephew is in the vicinity. Some of us, we've been doing things out of the will of God. We've been living any kind of way. Oh God, Amen. Bless God. But we have family members that have been praying oh and been pressing God. and been asking God, God to hold out. Don't, don't send your wrath on them. Just look back. If you just hang on to them just a little while longer, they're going to get themselves together. So Abraham. My God. Somebody say Abraham. Abraham. Abraham asked God. He said, if it's 45, will you spare it? God said, if it's 45, I'll spare it. Okay. He said, God, if you don't get mad, I'm going to ask you one more time. What if it's 40? What if it's 35? What if it's 30? And he keep going, he get all the way down to 5. Wow. If it's 5 of them, Lord, you still going to spare it? Are you still going to destroy it? God says, if I find five faithful folk, I won't destroy it. And so, once he gets down to about 5, about to the lowest number he can get to, the Lord leaves him. And he's just looking at Solomon and Gomorrah. And what amazes me about it is I compare it to today's life mm. and Christians today. Mm. How many churches do you know that are just still existing because there are one or two that are still living in the will of God? Mm. Mm. There are churches today that you only got two folk that's really truly holding up the bloodstained banner of Christ. Oh my God, my God. And that they're only existing because of the sake of them. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so... And so we get down to Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and we, we, we know that it's about homosexuality and the, oh, 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 homosexuality and all kinds of things. That, that's one of the issues that we got today that we got to face today on November 6th that you got to vote for. Amen. That's right. 
And it's and, and, and what's so what's so crazy about it is that's not the only sin in the church. Amen. That's just one of the things that sticks out Amen. back then in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. And so we get down to verse 19. Nice verse 19, nice verse 19, and it talks about Lot and how Lot was at the gate. He stayed at the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah. He wasn't even fully in there, he was just at the gate. Somebody said at the gate. At the gate. He's at the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's satisfied about where he is. How many of us, how many of us, or do you see are satisfied about where they are in their place? They're satisfied that they're in one day and then out the next day they're satisfied by living two different lives. When they come to church, they come to church oh, praising God is all like it's all dandy. But if you catch your money through Saturday, all hell is in their life. Oh, Lord Jesus. And so we get down to Sodom and Gomorrah. With Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot is there. He has uh, two angels that came in disguise of men that came to him. And they asked and they they asked him, Do you have anybody here because we're about to destroy the city? And see, one thing I like about God, God will always send a prophet to before something happens, God God said in his word in Amos chapter 3, God does nothing until he reveals his secrets and his mysteries to his prophets. So he said the angels were well, to me, I looked at them as prophets. Because they came and told him what was about to happen. They came to warn him. If we look in the Bible, we look at Nathan. We look at Nathan and David. When David was stepping out of the will of God and he was committing adultery, Nathan had a hard time to come to David, a king, had a hard time coming to him and telling him that God was going to take his child because he killed a man and stole his wife and had a baby with him. And see, what they, see, see God love, people love to make God out to be this kind of happy, joyous God and and this God that never, never is sad or angry. God is a God of judgment as well. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We are living in the last evil days, and God is a God of judgment. God is coming back to break judgment. And if we continue to, to, to paint this kind of God that God is not is not looking at how we live. Yeah. See, see, mo okay, most of us, I'm gonna bring it down to you this way. Most of us spend more time looking good than we actually are being good. Oh God. Oh, wow. If you came for the message that you was going to get 10 cars in the house, I'm sorry, you might as well just leave right now. You might as well just leave right now. Because I'm worried about your soul. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. Just because you got $10 million don't mean you're getting to heaven. Mm -hmm. People come to church and tie. Good money. Mm -hmm. But still going to hell. Oh, Lord Jesus. And see, one thing, we, we, we got, we got the, the facades of church. We got the suits and the dresses. And, and we got the... the, the the altar laid out right and the church looking grand and, and wonderful as usual. But we need to really check our lives. Because when, we, when, the, when judgment comes, God is going to look at your record. He's going to look at the book of life. Are you in the book of life? Oh, Are you really living the way that I told you to live? Are you really living up to the standards that I set in the early church? Are you really walking in holiness? Are you really walking in boldness? Despite the fact that everybody doing any and everything, because they're hooked on phones, are you really hooked on Jesus? Oh, yes. And that is key. And so we here, go back to, to chapter 19 in Genesis. Go back there. And, and, and they come and they and they come and they tell him that that, that Solomon and Gomorrah is about to be destroyed. And before we even get to that, they're in they're in Lot's house. Right, somebody say in Lot's house. In Lot's house. Communion and having conversation and talking. And mm. there's a knock on the door. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> See, that's, that's how bad it was. That's how serious the sin was. Wow. Look at that as a sign. So they come knocking on the door. They say, men of young, old, old men, young men, middle age, come knocking on the door. Say, Lot, where them two men at? This is all men. This ain't no women here. Where them two men at? Bring them outside so we can have sex with them. Bring them outside so we can have sex with them. This is the Bible. This ain't nothing I said. This is the Bible. Go go to look at it for yourself. In uh, chapter 19, verse 5. It's right there in the Bible. See, I don't know what Bible y'all read, but the Bible I read got homosexuality, it got adulterers, it got backstabbers, it got Liars, they got people that have slept with the brothers' wives and all kind of stuff. This, 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 this is the stuff that we that that has been addressed in the Word of God that we sweep under the rug and we don't address and and we shout over it and we and we and we speak in tongues over it and we fall at the mouth and put our eyes in the back of our head, but we never address it. And we got many people that come to our church undelivered. Mm. 
still undelivered. Come in church, still got stuff going on. That happened to them when they was 15 and 12 years old. Oh my God, my God. Why do you want to address it? Why? I'm going to tell you about this. Some of them, they've been hurt in the church. Oh Lord. Some of them were molested in the church. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, nobody want to speak about that. Mm -hmm. They don't want to speak on that. They say how they living out of out of the will of God, but won't say, But see, before you can even before you can even fix something, you gotta know the root of it. Yes. You gotta know how you got like that. Wow. How did you become a homosexual? How did you become this way? How did what 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 happened before you get delivered? What happened to you? Yes, sir. Oh God! Before we can fix it, what happened to you? Jesus. And I'm a firm believer. You you can sit and you can sit and cry all day long. Yes, it happened to you. You can play the victim, but you got to get to a place in your life where you say, here. I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to get delivered. Because it's not about what I'm giving them power if I stay in this pit, if I stay in this mess, if I stay in this rut and think that, oh, I'm going to continue to play the victim and God's going to have mercy on me and God's going to look at it as if, oh, I can live any kind of way because I got an excuse. Oh, oh my. But the excuses are going out the door. Yeah. God ain't looking for no excuses. See, one thing people, people make the mistake of thinking this Christian life is so grand and you ain't going to never go through nothing. But when, when you when you say God use me, you don't understand what you're really saying. You're saying, God, I want you to send me through some hell. I want you to send me through some turmoil. I want you to send me through some things and some situations people will talk about me. I, mean, I want you to send me through some things where people are going to lie on me and say all kind of evil magic against me. Call me everything but a child of God. You talking When you sign up to be a Christian, that's what you're signing up for. Why? Because it's not about you. It never was about you. That's right. Yeah. Because God needs your testimony come on, to save many other people that got to come after you. Yes. Wow. Before you went through, somebody else went through and had to testify to you that God was good and that God is a healer. Yes. God is a deliverer. He can sanctify you. He can clean you up. He can purify you. He can make it look like you never even went through the hell you went through. Oh, my. Oh my, 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 my. I'm out smelling. I'm out smelling right now. And so if you get this on, they go on and tell them. Bring them out so we can have sex with them. And see, that's 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 the kind of boldness of sin that we have in the church. And so, see, it used to be back in the day, a uh, 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 person that even smoked cigarettes was scared to smoke in front of the church. Now we got Baptist preachers and Baptist deacons smoking outside the church. Oh my God. The sin has become so comfortable in the church. And it's ridiculous. We're supposed to be a church on fire and a church for power. When, when sinners come to the church and come to the house of God, there should be a sense of conviction among the house. But there's no conviction because we preaching money. We preaching prosperity. Oh my. We preaching everything else. We are preaching Jesus. And see, when you put Jesus in, in the front, in the front, money will follow ministry. That's right. So. It amazed me, first lady, Jesus. that even back then in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were so bold. All the homosexuals came on and said, let's have sex with the men. Mm -hmm. So bold. Mm -hmm. How many people are so bold today that they, you got, you got people that's living all kind of lifestyles. They plan on our organs. Oh. They're up in the pulpit. Oh, they ushering. Oh, Jesus. They sitting in the congregation, walking demons. Woo. Getting undelivered. Wow. But we shot. But we run. Mm -hmm. But we foam at the mouth and we prophesy. Mm -hmm. And we tell you you'll get a house. We tell you that the faith of God is on your life. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Before the blessing can come, blessing must follow order. And I give Ty the credit because he said this one day. I was looking over on YouTube. And he said, who in their right mind will put money in a vending machine that says out of order? Oh, man. put blessing and, and put prosperity on you when you got a huge out of order sign on you. Wow. Right. wow. Oh, God. Before God can bless, and he even said, he even said in Genesis, you didn't, hear, you didn't see the word bless until chapter, verse 22. It took 20 verses before God can bless a thing. In, chapter, in verse 2 of Genesis chapter, chapter 1, it said it was dark and it was without form and darkness on the face of the deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He cursed the thing before he blessed it. Mm -hmm. He corrected it before he blessed it. Mm -hmm. God is coming. God, God is about to send a sense of correction on the house. We got so many churches that's popping up on corners, that's popping up every which way, that's preaching everything but the truth doctrine yeah. of God. And God is about to tear it down. Why? Because God is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. What am I saying? What do you say, Mr. Girl? Holiness is still right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's still right. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's still right. Yes. 
It's My still God. right. And so mm, mm, mm. they did, and they tell him to come out, and Lot goes outside and says, Please do not hurt these men. Let me let me tell you how let me tell you how nasty and filthy they were and how foul they were against God. Lot even offered up his two virgin daughters. Say, please take my daughters. They ain't had no sex at all. Take them, have sex with them. But please don't touch these men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it takes me back to 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 mm. to Jesus when he came. God told the world. God told the devil, take my son. But don't you touch Brian. Mm. Don't you touch Stephanie. Don't you touch Monica. Don't you touch Mama. Mama. Take Mama. Th take my son. Mama. But don't you touch him. Because I got a plan for him. Ooh. I got something in my will for him. They say they're going to prosper. Jesus, Jesus. Why? Because they're they going to seek me first. Yes. Job's name came up in a conversation between the devil and God. Mm, 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 mm. Job's name came Somebody say his name came up. His name, his name, came, name up. came up. That's how he started going for all kind of hell. Why? Because he was faithful. Because he had a heart for God. And God was going to put him to the test and see. If, you, if I put you through a little bit, are you still going to praise me? If I put you through wow. a little bit, are you still going to magnify me? If I put you through a little bit, are you still going to come to church? If I put you through a little bit, are you still going to give me a correct time? If I put you through a little bit, are you still going to do what you've been doing? It's easy to praise God when everything is going on. Yes, yes, yes. But can you stay in position? Can you continue preaching? Can you continue ushering? Can you continue picking up folk? When all hell is breaking loose in your house. Jesus. Can't you do it? My God, my God. And Job said no. He said no. He said, I ain't gonna curse God. His own wife even told him to curse God. Lost his kids. Lost his sheep. Or all that. She lost his Bentley. He lost his BMW. He lost his Mercedes. He, you know, he was rich man. He, he, he had it, he had it together. He lost everything. Yes, yes, yes. But never mm. curse God. My God. Never. Don't do that. <laughs> never <laughs> said I was going to stop coming to church. Mm. Never said I was going to stop being in position. Mm, 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 mm. That's what we got to get today. Because we live in the last and evil days. Yeah. And the devil is not going to hell for sin because he never committed sin. He encouraged it, but he never did. Mm. Only, only say he can never be forgiven for is trying to overthrow God's kingdom. Yeah. Mm. Think about it. The devil never sinned. Only thing he did was try to come up against God and overthrow his kingdom. You can go to hell for sin. Wow, I knew you ain't know that, did they? You can go to hell for it. So we have to get we have to get to the place where, and not even that, not even correction. We have to get to the place where we can take correction, mm. where we can take chastisement. Black people, I don't know what they got to know about black people. They don't like to be corrected. They don't like to take chastisement. They don't like to be told they're wrong. They don't even like to, they don't even like to apologize for the stuff they do. Wow. But God said, before I can bless you with the prayer that you constantly stand on your face for, you got to get some things right in your life. You got to get some things right in your life. So, so going back to the text, Lot goes outside and tells them, take my daughters, don't take the men. Take my doors, but they don't want the men. That's how bold and how nasty and foul it is. That's why God had to destroy it. And see, it, it amazes me. It amazes me that as we, as we go into this golden season and how homosexuality is on question six in Merlin. I love Barack Obama, but I'm both no on question six. I know that's right. Amen. My name is Deontay Curran. I'll point that message right there. <laughs> I'm both, see, 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 yes, I love Barack Obama, and people give Barack Obama hell because he's black and because of the things he said, but notice, he never said, I always want to personally fight for him. He's smart because he said, I'm going to let the states deal with it. And see, people have, people have given Barack Obama hell, and they want to vote for Mitt Romney, but you won't vote for Mitt Romney, a man that believes in many gods? You have to, you have to decide for yourself. I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking about becoming independent now, really. But that's the stuff that we face. This stuff is real, isn't it? This, see, we, we, if we continue to sweep it under the rug, Bishop said it the other service one day, if we continue to sweep stuff under the rug, it's going to get lumpy. And people will start tripping over it. Oh, Jesus. Tripping, it's it's going to become noticeable. Mm. That you won't have no choice 
But to deal with it. Because you can't get to the next 